Hey folks, Josue Sabora here. Today is Christmas Eve. <laughs> and it's another rainy day. Well, yesterday it was raining, it was windy, and it was very cold. But what can you do? <laughs> but anyway, this special day is where we gather around with our friends and family on this wonderful Christmas time throughout the weekend. So that way we can have a delicious feast, open up the gifts that we have. Also, I guess for other people around who have snow, they can go around building snowmans and throwing snowballs, you know, riding around in a one open sleigh. <laughs> Well, a slave ride, and maybe even other slaves, too. Yeah, everything. Even making snow angels, too. And have hot cocoa and all. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to be reviewing one more Christmas movie, and, well, it's not a perfect one, and I don't think it's that good of a movie. But you know what? Even its bad films uh, has some great moments. I'll give you that. But this one is a movie that I'm sure some people will love or like, but others wouldn't because of the its dark tone and nature and all. But I guess everybody has their ways. It's a Disney Christmas movie. Because I know we had some Christmas movies from Disney. But this one came out on November 22nd, 1985. Which was the year I was born, by the way. It's called One Magic Christmas. It's a story about a guardian angel who just came to Medford, Ontario, Canada. To help out this one woman who has a family that lost her faith and spirit as well as joy of Christmas. Yeah. I saw this movie on the Disney Channel when I was a kid. I think I saw it once when it aired. And then later I saw this on elementary school. Been a long time until it started to air it on TV but it's hardly uh, on TV that much not even on the Disney Channel but they did have it available on DVD in widescreen it was available since 2001 they later had a re-release um, apparently Netflix re-released it somehow and they later streamed it but it's now available on Disney Plus so you can finally watch the movie for yourself. Well, I'm going to be fair to say this. I wasn't the biggest fan of this movie. I wanted to like it because it definitely feels um, good for the heart and soul. And I like the idea that they had a, a Christmas guardian angel trying to help out someone. Because a whole entire family is in a turmoil. And they're trying to make things right for everyone. When, when one of their daughters uh, ends up getting a visit to Santa Claus. And so that way he can help things uh, back to the way they are. You know, everything will be back to normal and all that. But of course they're struggling here and there. Now hey, I can deal with a depressing scenes and other dramatic moments in and other films, even holiday movies, because of course there's always going to be a dramatic scene. I love It's a Wonderful Life. It's one of the best Christmas movies, not to mention one of the best dramas and classics, even a comedy too in the mix. I mean, it, it definitely felt more meaningful. It had a powerful message here. I mean, this one man who had it all, I mean, no matter what, I mean, he's pretty much an outcast himself, but the fact that 
he attempted to commit suicide because things were not going right in the world when when he found out that there was no money in the bank and then things just seems to go so wrong that their friends and community had done a lot of help for for George Bailey to to do him no one I mean the fact is he had a wonderful life and he had a wonderful family he has a wonderful you know beautiful love interests and, and everything I mean they really care for him more than that evil miser Mr. Potter but hey they had to work for him they had to deal with him and all, all that but I'm just hoping that would be the case for this Disney film while being produced in Canada yeah but because this one has Mary Steenburgen who's a great actress I love her in other films too especially uh, Clifford yeah with Barn Short and, and the late great uh, Charles Grodin yeah and I even love her in other films too like um, Parenthood and uh, I think she was also in the movie, uh, yeah, um, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, uh, Pontiac Moon, which is an underrated film, and all those other ones. She's, she's great. And um, Harry Dean Stanton, another great actor, no longer with us, but yeah, he was in films like um, Alien, as well as Cool Hand Luke, uh, Repo Man, and Pretty in Pink. Um, Christine, escape from New York, and uh, Paris, Texas, yeah, Red Dawn, you name it. It was terrific, but that's what I was hoping for how this movie's going to become. And it's a miracle. And they even had um, Elizabeth Harnas, who, who, who later went on to play Alice in the Alice in Wonderland TV series, Adventures in Wonderland, from the Disney Channel. But yeah, but why not? But, and I know there's also earlier performances by Elias Coteas and Sarah Pauly, you know, just before she went on to do Ramona and then she spun a career with films like, uh, like she went on to do um, The Adventures of Baron Malchausen and then she later went on to do films like Go, as well as on a dead remake and splice yeah. you name it okay <laughs> anyway um, but it's I was hoping this was gonna be at least for my experience it was gonna be at least terrific but sadly it was just way too shallow and depressing and it, it, it's kind of hard to to handle sometimes. So here we go. The movie stars Mary Steenburgen, Gary Sarvarba, Herodine Stanton, Arthur Hill, Robbie Magwood, Elizabeth Harnos, Michelle uh, Mayrink, Alias Mateus, Robson, Jan Rubis. Yeah, because I know he went on to do other movies. Uh, Sarah Pauly, Graham Jarvis, Timothy Weber, Joy Thompson, John Friesen, and Deborah McGrath. It's written by Tom McCann along with Philip Borso and Barry Healy and interesting enough it's produced by Fred Roos, yes who had collaborated with uh, Francis Ford Coppola in their movies together um, along with Peter O'Brien and it's directed by Philip Borso. The movie begins set in Medford, Ontario. We meet a Christmas guardian angel named Gideon played by Herodine Stanton who's being assigned for the job by good old Jolly Saint Nick himself Santa Claus from the North Pole, also known as San Nicholas, played by Jan Rupis. 
to restore the Christmas spirit of this one woman, hard working and all, but at times very cynical and pretty stubborn, but nevertheless she has a caring mother named Jenny Granger, who's played by Mary Steenburgen, but she's been going through hard times. Um, her Granger family, as a mother of one son and one daughter, Cal, played by Robbie Magwood, and Abby, played by Elizabeth Harnos, and she also has a husband named Jack, played by Gary Barsavaraba. Sorry. Which, unfortunately, he has been out of work for six months, been laid off, and somehow they had to evict their home that the company owns by the next year, which will be January 1st. So they're already getting ready to pack up and move and have their next uh, family to move in. Yeah. So they were really struggling very hard. They're in a turmoil. Jack unfortunately does fix some bikes as a hobby because someday he dreamt to actually own a bike shop. So that way they'll be able to earn more pavements to save their home and and all their expenses that they got. Because I know they're trying to spend some more Christmas presents if they could or maybe they'll just you know, maybe they'll save some because unfortunately they're not going to afford much of Christmas because they're ready to be packing up, ready to leave right away. So, so of course they're going to be using up uh, the family savings um, to set it up for the bike shop too. So at that point on, Jenny works as a grocery store uh, cashier, yeah, checkout girl. So maybe this will earn some more money that way. And just two nights before Christmas Eve, uh, Abby meets Gideon while mailing the letter to Santa. And Gideon had asked her mother to mail it instead because that way, just for their own safety, he actually protects Abby from getting hit by a car. Yeah, this, this is really scary having to see that. So this will be the safest um, gift from Maul. No danger will happen to her. Unfortunately though, Jenny uh, refused to mail it because yes, she did lose her faith in Christmas. She doesn't even want to mention it. At all. Well, sometimes she does, but she just doesn't want to deal with it because of what just happened a long time ago. I, I guess it's because maybe she didn't get what she wanted or something else that happened during her time so it's like she just stopped believing. Yeah. Anyway, the family would later visits Jack's grandfather Kayla played by Arthur Hill who gives Abby a snow globe of the North Pole. So Gideon would visit Abby again and warns her that some bad things are about to happen. Yes, everyone's going to be in terrible bad luck, which is going to lead to a big tragedy happening. But she should not be afraid at all. So at that point on, he accidentally drops the snow globe and, and then magically uh, reappears. Yes, because he has uh, magical powers. And interesting enough, I mean, he did use some magical powers to to block the the hockey puck. You know, when a bunch of kids were playing hockey right in front of them, so they almost got hit, but they ends up going straight into the house window. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then we begin to find out about what Jenny and Jack's discussing about their finances, where. She tells him to find a new job instead of opening a bike bicycle shop. But he got mad and winds up going outside, starts taking a walk 
uh, throughout the entire snow on this in the entire streets of of the neighborhood so hopefully he'll start thinking what's going on meanwhile you know Jenny was walking with him she was singing a, a song that she remembers but of course Gideon had finally arrived um, beginning to know her and once um, she met him soon all the Christmas lights had been shut off all the way around her uh, I think the power kind of went off too so at that point on they had to start with a new generator and this is where tragedy hits on Christmas Eve and boy you wouldn't believe this she was getting ready to go to work um, with her partner then suddenly uh, as earlier in the film uh, Jenny did met uh, Harry Dickens who's played by Wayne Bro Robson yeah he was out of work too he had a son who was uh, ready to actually be able to to leave him there at the bus station because I think they're ready to go maybe to spend the family for the holidays also because he was trying to sell some of his possessions that he has because of course they're not going to be able to be around at this point Jenny unfortunately uh, missed him because well I, I know at first they just met um, at the, the supermarket and um, well, he was, she was holding up the line, you know, she had to work with her her nasty boss, you know, giving her a tough time these days. Um, anyway, in order to support himself and his son, she goes on her way while Jack leaves the children in the car, just ready to go to the bank to withdraw some of their savings that they have for Christmas shopping. Then Abby leaves the car to see Jenny at the grocery store across the street and tells her that Jack is at the bank. Then leaves to stop her and then her boss fires her. And then next thing you know, Harry eventually starts to rob the bank. And yeah, it was a hold up. And sad to say, Jack got shot and killed by Harry and then Harry just ran away with all the money and started to get into the getaway by stealing his car you know with both um, Cal and Abby together and they head off in this high-speed chase Jenny eventually took um, Harry's car which is all beat up and was ready to chase him around along with the cops until suddenly Harry um, just drove off from the bridge and landed straight into the river where he drowned along with Cal and Abby or did they so now only left Jenny all alone on this one miserable and horrible Christmas Eve until finally we found out that Cal and Abby are safe. Yeah, Gideon actually came by as fast as he could to save both of them by getting them out of the car before um, Harry just drove off. And he died. Sad to say, Gideon did not come to help um, their father, Jack. So now he's already dead. But Jenny at least was relieved that Cal and Abby were alive and safe. So even though they're probably going to be ready for a funeral, they're going to try to have the best Christmas that they could, but it's not going to be the same without Jack. So this is what's going to lead to what's going to happen next when Abby decided to run away um, to Gideon so that way Gideon can finally take Abby to the North Pole 
to meet Santa Claus. They'll find a way to actually help the family and their mom, of course, to not only restore the Christmas spirit, but also to bring back their father. So yes, Abby was there, got to meet Santa Claus, along with Mrs. Santa Claus inside their home at the North Pole. Yeah, and you notice how it looks exactly like how the snow globe was? Yeah, so it didn't seem quite as big as we were hoping for. But that's how they did it. Uh, so they went inside, and, and then uh, Nicholas somehow went over there to the, um, to the factory. And then he begins to find out that, yes, the letter that Jenny had sent a long time ago when she was at the hotel the Ramada Inn, where she did wrote Santa a letter about what she wanted for Christmas when she was just a young girl. All this time it was stuck in transit and now uh, she was ready to give it to her so that way she'll be able to remember. I mean, who knows? I guess maybe he'll probably might be able to give her some gifts that he promised. Then Abby came back home, ready to send Jenny the letter to her mom. But of course, uh, Cal just found out that even though he was just um, fooling around with the snow globe, uh, he found out that, yes, Abby was lost, and he, and he thought that Abby did not want to see Santa Claus at all. He just, but you are going to get into bigger trouble uh, now that uh, you're finally here. So Jenny, um, just came by, you know, took uh, Abby to bed in her bedroom, and yeah, Abby just gave her the letter, and now the letter that she refused to send um, to Santa, well, now she's finally going to get her act together and be able to send it by mail, you know, with Gideon coming to Brown, and yep. And soon all the Christmas lights have been restored, all lighting up, as well as the electricity and everything. So now we begin to find out that Jack is alive. It seems to me like it just went back in time, and it did. So he was just walking around, finally went back to his um, steps, and now they're going to have a wonderful Christmas Eve. You know, try to fix everything that could be solved, because now she gets to go back to Harry and and be able to pay for all the processions. So now he'll be able to have a wonderful Christmas with his son. Luckily, Jenny almost got fired, but at this point on, her boss decided to give her, you know, one more chance to actually go to work on on Thursday, because after all, today is Christmas, so. You know, we want to spend more time with the family before we get back to work. And now, um, they finally set up the Christmas angel on top of the, the tall pine tree. Yeah, with all the Christmas lights, decorations and all for the entire town. And they're singing the song, Old Christmas Tree. Yeah, you know that song. Old Christmas Tree, Old Christmas Tree, I love it, I buy branches. Yeah. So, now they're just getting ready to meet Santa Claus, and so it leads to this wonderful happy ending, where yes, Santa had finally appeared at their home, with uh, Jen Jenny just going downstairs to find out, you know, that now she'll be able to believe, and once... Santa was there delivering all the gifts for the entire family, and, and he was ready to head off. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Well, well, it could have been a cheerful and heartfelt, touching drama as as a Christmas film. It still feels uh, pretty shallow, dark, cold, and bitter, and at times it does start to feel more like like a TV movie of the week type. Or, and it also has 
some scenes that just seems like it came out of a sitcom. Like, there's a scene in the movie where Jenny was taking a shower. Boy, I was expecting Clifford was going to pop up. <laughs> yeah, like in the movie, because, yes, yeah, she was in the shower, too. But, no, no let's not go there. <laughs> um, no, there was a scene where she was uh, taking a shower. Suddenly, the, the soap towel uh, fell and, and actually uh, covered the drain. So that's where the water starts to fill up, and then everyone has to go to the bathroom. Yeah, first it was Abby, then it was Cal, and then next it was Molly because yeah, Molly's one of them that they're ready to, uh, I guess, move in or so. And yeah, she was played by Sarah Polly. And then next thing you know, <clears throat> the entire tub is is full, <laughs> and they made a mess. So now. Cal and Abby had to clean up, you know, Cal had to mop the floor till he accidentally broke the bathroom window. <laughs> and then there's other scenes too that just uh, seems out of place. Wow. Some of them was done practically at times and I know they did use a little bit of special effects on the the powers that um, the angel had used. Also, um, there was this one scene was when Abby was already exploring the, the North Pole. She kept saying three times, my brother is not going to believe this. <laughs> yes, I mean, come on, you had to say it three times? You could have just said it once. And there you go. They had a lot of uh, dark scenes in this movie that it's kind of hard that even Disney themselves have to release this for its uh, G rating. I mean, of course, there's no harsh language in anything, so that's that's a good sign. There's no blood or, or any other. But it, it's, it is pretty uh, disturbing to see uh, a scene where, where their father gets killed and, and it almost leads to deaths of, of Cal and, and Abby getting drowned, I mean, I mean, they had all the bad luck that they were getting, but this just wasn't something we want to see. And, <clears throat> this is not one of uh, Mary Steenburgen's best performances. I mean, she could do better than this. She comes across as being totally miserable, not to mention stubborn. But I guess I can understand how she feels. I mean, yes, you know, she's been going through hard times. I mean, she, she starts to feel very cynical. Like, she just really doesn't care about the holidays at all. Because nothing seems to cheer her up at all. Maybe because she stopped believing in Santa and stopped believing in Christmas itself because she couldn't get what she wanted. But at that point on, at least she had a family. And I guess that's what matters the most. But they were already in a turmoil, you know, they, they're trying to recuperate their losses and hopefully they'll try to pay their finances to save their home so they won't move. Or even if they try to move to a new place, I mean, maybe they'll find someone somewhere they'll be able to have a miracle. Harry Dean Stanton's performance, I'll give you that. He was great as... Uh, the Christmas uh, angel, Gideon. You know, definitely Abby's guardian angel to actually help them out. I mean, I know his appearance isn't what it seems to be, but I think he really did tend to help them out as soon as they could. And Jan Rubis as Santa Claus, you know, St. Nicholas himself is also terrific. And it almost feels almost as realistic as it could be so I know that's what they're trying to do but it's not well done I mean even for a production in Canada because they could do a lot of great film too they, they really could but this was not the best Christmas movie that we had to offer I mean, it's decent, 
in some ways, but it just feels way too shallow, way too depressing. Um, it's kind of tough to watch at times, and it's very sad. But I guess if you had to get to what was the best part of them all, I guess you had to go for some performances and some magical um, moments here and there. And I guess at this point on, at least you got a beautiful location in Canada. Then I guess it's, I guess it's at least refreshing at times. But sadly, it could have been. I mean, yeah, I mean, not to mention, you know, there's unlikable people in this film too. And then there's some likable people. Like, the boss was a jerk. Harry's an ass, but I mean the way he acts too, and the way the way this happened. I mean th this was horrible. But luckily, I think soon he'll change his ways. And I mean, if you like the movie, it's cool. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it again, it's magical, it's touching, but still, it's just not not perfectly well done or well made but at least it did try to go for it so anyway that's that's my opinion but I'm sure everyone all felt the same way too so that's uh, One Magic Christmas and I give the film two stars I'm Joseph A. Sabora and I'll see you later and have a happy and safe Merry Christmas to all.